there's still many unanswered questions regarding the issues surrounding the Aquarium Adu's organ harvesting organ donor saga. Many responses to my last video looking at the medical issues around the Aquarium Adu story revolved around why they did not seek an organ donor from the immediate family, parents, children or other close family members. Many people feel this would have helped them avoid the brouhaha that has landed them in hot water with the UK authorities. And these folks have a valid point. Some people assume or feel the Aquarium Adus did not choose a family donor because they did not want to subject family members to complications that may arise after organ donation. In this video, we're going to look at a few questions around this subject. First, what are the criteria for someone to become an organ donor in the United Kingdom? What are the complications if you decide to donate your kidney? Yes, we know you can live with a single kidney, but is that all there is to it? Can issues arise in the short or medium to long term? Next, what tests in the UK are used to determine whether an individual is a suitable donor for somebody or not? And lastly, are there any conditions that could have prevented Aquarium Adu family members from donating, perhaps age, pre-existing medical problems and so on? So let's see if the answers to these questions will help us to understand more, not just about the Aquarium Adu story, but healthcare living in the United Kingdom. He did not try to get donation from a British citizen. In which case, that you will begin to ask, that citizen would have registered, oh, I want to donate my kidney. They are all foreigners that came in and they want to use the facility. But you can't jump the queue. What they say that queue. What do they? What do they you, you like? can't judge the queue. What, which queue? The queue of uh, uh, the, the on the register. Uh, so, so when you come, you now queue up. Yes. I'm coming. You queue up, and when it gets to your turn. Yes. You now donate your kidney. Well, the, the, you will be contacted that a, a compatible organ has been found. You must go on the queue. One, two. There yes. must be no what you lawyers call consideration uh, for the matter. There must be no payment matter. Uh -huh. Three. Yes. The person has to be a blood relation. Look, you know, this issue of the person being a blood relation mm -hmm. mm -hmm. does not work. Okay. Why I say it does not work? In medical um, analysis, that uh, the little that I know, I'm not a medical doctor. Hello, I'm Dr. Sylvia, a general practitioner and health educator based in the United Kingdom. My channel provides helpful health information to educate and help us live better lives. If this is the kind of information that you want, please like this video and do consider subscribing to the channel. Firstly, what are the criteria for becoming an organ donor in the United Kingdom? And related to this, what donor type makes the best organ donor? Let's start with what we know. There are two types of organ donors, a deceased organ donor or a living donor. The first type requires for someone to have passed on and within moments of their passing, their organs can be procured and transplanted to a recipient waiting on the transplant waiting list. The recipient therefore needs to be ready at any moment they could receive a call that it's time for them to have transplant surgery. But in my first video, I explained some of the challenges around organ donors and the very lengthy waiting list. Especially for ethnic minorities like Africans, the demand far outstrips the supply and people may end up waiting five years or more on the list compared to Caucasians who may wait two to three years before getting a transplant. For a living donor, the transplant can be planned at the best or most convenient time for everyone. And there are a lot more advantages as you will see from this table on the NHS blood and transplant website. For example, the living donor's kidney lasts longer than the deceased organ. The waiting time with a living donor before you transplant is much less. The kidney starts working within a day of the transplant. A diseased kidney takes longer for the organ to wake up and start working. I'll place a link to this site in the description box below. So if you'd like to learn more about the differences between living and deceased organ donation, please go and have a look. Next, let's look at some essential criteria that must exist for a person who wishes to be a living donor in the United Kingdom. One, they're often blood relatives, but they can be friends, spouses, partners, or other family members. Two, they do not have to be the same age as the recipient or have the same blood group or tissue type. Three, a living donor must be aged 18 years or older in England. In Scotland, it's 16 years or older and be in good health. 
And four, a living donor needs to be a person who wants to volunteer or have been approached by somebody else who needs a transplant to ask them if they will be interested in donating a kidney. Now, let's take a look at the good health a living donor requires by examining a few relevant conditions. The first is age. So we know people under 18 in England and 16 in Scotland cannot be living kidney donors. However, if you have a young person who understands the risk and has been carefully assessed, the regulations do allow young people to be considered as donors. An example could be if you have a 15 year old who has an unwell brother or sister and wishes to donate to them. The critical thing to remember for young people is they have more life years ahead of them and you have to think about their risk of developing kidney disease or other conditions in future. But what about older donors? An older person whose organs are in good shape, the heart, the lungs, liver and kidneys can donate. However, many older donors do require more tests to check whether the kidney is okay and will work well enough for the recipient. We also want to check that the donor will be fine without that organ and is fit for surgery. The next condition is obesity or being overweight. If a person who wants to stand as a living donor is excessively overweight, they may have great kidneys but might struggle to recover following surgery. Being overweight may also place additional strain on their single kidney after they have had their procedure. So being overweight can affect the chances of somebody becoming a living donor. They will also often need more tests and to lose weight before proceeding. Next, let's talk about diabetes and cancer. Diabetes is a condition where the body cannot regulate sugar and other natural chemicals leading to organ damage, the kidneys, the heart, the eyes and so on. The transplant team will screen potential donors to see if they are at risk of developing diabetes in future. So they consider if they have a family history of diabetes, if they had diabetes while they were pregnant, if they are of African or Asian background where there is a higher risk of developing diabetes, or if they are overweight. If someone has diabetes and wants to donate, we will look at their sugar control, how good is it, and is there any current kidney damage plus the risk of future harm to their heart and kidneys. Would you think cancer would stop a person from being a living donor? Cancer could be a slightly tricky one. Having active cancer, i.e. a person who is not in remission and whose cancer is growing, means they cannot be a living donor. This is the case if there is lung cancer, advanced breast cancer and malignant melanoma, a type of skin cancer and so on. But with some other types of cancer, if there is remission, following lots of detailed tests and assessments, it may be possible to donate. It is essential for the person who is receiving the organ to be aware of the situation and decide if they want to receive an organ from a person with cancer. Last but not the least, can a person with high blood pressure donate a kidney? Having high blood pressure does not automatically disqualify a person from donating a kidney. However, they need lots of testing to check they do not already have damage to their kidneys or their heart. Because if they do and give up their kidney, they are at higher risk of more complications. So that's a brief look at who is able to stand as a living donor. And we've revealed that an organ from a living donor Donor is better than from a deceased donor for many different reasons. Our next question looks at what is involved when donating a kidney. But first, let me tell you a personal story. When I was in my mid-teens, my father had kidney disease and required a transplant. Some close relatives were approached to assist. Not only were they closely related by blood, but my father had also been extremely generous supporting them over the years before he fell ill. He was like a big brother or uncle to them. And these were mature men in their late 20s and early 30s back then. However, they refused to help. Were they afraid they could die or did they not care enough about my dad? Volunteering a kidney is an amazing sacrifice. So let's look at what happens when someone donates a kidney. Many people are living with one kidney today. This is because they may have been born with one kidney or they may have donated one. Whichever the case, most of them live long, healthy lives. But it's good to be aware of possible risks and developments from donating a kidney. 
Let's start with immediate complications. The process to procure the kidney in most cases is major surgery and can take two to three hours under general anesthesia. And the risks of most other surgeries are also present, infection, bleeding. The surgical team will tell you there is a small risk of dying while on the operating table. They will discuss all this information but try to ensure that the risks of these complications are minimal. People who have donated their organs generally up on their feet within 24 hours of surgery. They are closely monitored for infection, bleeding or any other problems post-op. On average, they are out of the hospital in about 3 days or so. So while there are risks, these are minimal if the procedure is performed well and you receive great aftercare. What about the later complications? Allowing for individual differences, generally living with a single kidney after donation doesn't have many complications. Some people may experience tiredness more often or pain, but they can mostly continue with their daily activities. If you have donated one kidney, you are at a slightly higher risk of developing high blood pressure or experiencing a strain in your remaining kidneys function. This is why you need regular checkups to quickly detect and treat any changes. Kidney donors are less likely than the general population to develop kidney disease in the long term. This is because they receive such efficient screening before donation to ensure that their risks are negligible. Women who donate a kidney before having kids may have a slightly higher risk of high blood pressure in pregnancy or preeclampsia. Check out my video here to learn more about that topic. Now, can donating a kidney shorten your life? This is a valid question. But the evidence is that having survived the surgery, most kidney donors have an equivalent or even better survival and excellent quality of life compared to the general public. But here's another little tidbit. According to the NHS blood and organ transplant website, there is a small increased risk of severe kidney disease in certain groups of people, including black donors, younger donors, donors genetically related to their recipient, donors related to recipients with immunological causes of their kidney failure and overweight donors. So guys, these are some decisions that people who wish to volunteer or donate a kidney will need to consider. But I'd like to ask at this stage, if you are approached to volunteer and donate a kidney, what issues would underpin your decision? Please let me know in the comment section below. Now let's take a look at what tests in the UK are used to decide whether one person is suitable for donation or not. If you're acting as a potential donor for someone, it is essential to match your blood group or blood type and tissue type with theirs for compatibility. Blood group or type matching uses the ABO compatibility system which we are familiar with. You can check out a video on the related subjects I've done for blood groups and paternity. But back to organ donation. Essentially, people with the same blood groups can donate and receive to and from each other. And a person with blood group O can potentially donate an organ to individuals of any other blood group, while a person with blood group AB can potentially receive an organ from individuals in any other blood groups. However, other aspects must also match. So let's talk about tissue typing. There are a couple of blood tests involved in tissue typing. There is a blood test that checks for how well the recipient's HLA, that is human leukocyte antigen, matches that of the donor. We believe that the better the HLA match between the recipient and donor, the more successful the transplant will be over time. Interestingly, because of how DNA or genetic material is inherited or passed down, a parent and child could have at least a 50% chance of matching. However, siblings could have a 0 to 100% match, while unrelated donors can be even less likely to match. Another necessary test is the serum cross match. Serum cross match is a test that both donor and recipient will have several times both up to the day of surgery. It is essential to check whether the recipient has antibodies that can bind and destroy the donor's cells. If this happens, the transplant cannot take place to avoid immediate rejection of the organ 
even when your HLA and blood groups match. Other tests a donor will undergo mainly address their general health to answer the question, are they fit for surgery? Your blood pressure will be checked and this is significant because blood pressure and kidney disease are so closely related. Your urine will be checked for signs of infection or the presence of blood or protein in the urine that may indicate a problem with the kidneys. Next, there will be other blood tests checking for things like anemia. If your blood levels are low, there will be poor recovery after surgery and other complications. It may also suggest a problem that needs to be looked into and may prevent you from being able to donate. Next, blood sugar for diabetes. We've spoken of this already, but diabetes affects the kidneys and the heart amongst other organs, so it's important to detect whether or not it's present or whether a potential donor has a risk of of developing diabetes in future. Another blood test looks at your baseline liver and kidney functions. This will tell the transplant team whether your liver and kidneys are functioning well. They will also carry out tests to check for infection, looking for conditions like hepatitis or HIV, similar to if you are donating blood. That's not all. Other tests include chest x-rays to look at your lungs, an ECG or electrocardiogram, which is a tracing of your heart to tell us if your heart is functioning well. And then the potential donor will have kidney scans that will help locate the two kidneys and kidney function scans that would help the surgeons determine which kidney is the better to procure from the donor. Some people may also undergo a mental health assessment to determine if their mental health is in a good place. And that their desire to volunteer or donate a kidney will not compromise their mental health at that point or in the future. If all the tests go well, an application is made to the UK Human Tissue Authority for approval of the transplant and an independent assessor will check that the donor is happy and is not being coerced into making the decision before they proceed. And that is a little summary of what a potential living donor in the UK will go through in the journey to donating their kidney to save somebody's life. This segment of the video is devoted to whether any condition may have prevented the Aquarium Madu family members from donating a kidney. We've looked at potential effects of age, diabetes, high blood pressure and so on. And you can see that it's not a straightforward matter of going from being genetically related to landing on the operating table to donate the kidney. And of course, we have no access to information that can help us answer the question because remember, this is all confidential health information. But we have learned what can make a suitable donor, the best type of donor, what a donor goes through to prepare for surgery and their health or life expectations after donating a kidney. In my previous video, I shared about the health issues surrounding this case given its relationship to the UK. Please watch it if you've not seen it yet. You might also want to learn a little more about the NHS, that is the UK National Health Service, especially if you're coming over here soon or know somebody who's doing so. So check out this video here where I've got lots of really useful information that can help guide you in getting the best healthcare after you arrive. Don't forget to like this video. Please consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you again soon.